Right here I have some pennies that I turned into silver and gold, and I did it using one of the coolest chemistry demos I know of. No, they aren't actually gold, but the experiment is magic in more ways than meet the eye. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a chemistry demo that seems to just so blatantly violate the laws of physics. There are a few variations of this penny alchemy experiment, but they all give the same result. I like to place pennies in a tray of water, and then toss in some lye and zinc metal dust. The pennies begin changing color not long after adding the chemicals, and after a while they're completely covered in a silvery coating. Now this is cool by itself, but sticking the pennies in a flame gives an even more impressive result. They turn to this incredible gold color. The gold appearance is really just due to the brass alloy made in the flame, but even so, I certainly feel like an alchemist when doing it. Now this experiment has been popular among chemistry teachers for decades, but all the write-ups on it seem to gloss over how incredibly cursed it is. So the first part of the reaction is nothing crazy. Zinc reacts with hydroxide in the presence of water to form the zincate ion, along with some hydrogen gas. So how does this end up plating the copper? Well, this is where things get sticky. You might think that the copper simply replaces the dissolved zinc, but that doesn't make sense because zinc's the more reactive metal here. This is easy to see by tossing galvanized nails in a copper sulfate solution. The zinc plating dissolves and the copper crashes out, and that's because zinc is more reactive than copper. Now if you try the reverse reaction, sticking copper metal in a zinc sulfate solution, nothing happens. Well, not unless you apply a voltage to it. Oh yeah, a voltage. Maybe there's a battery being formed here somewhere. I mean, zinc does make good batteries, right? Well, there is, but it only makes things more confusing. In order to convert the zincate made in the first part of the reaction back into zinc metal, something has to drive electrons into it. So what's doing that? We've already ruled out copper, and it can't be the lye either because that's what was used to dissolve zinc in the first place. The only thing left is the zinc metal itself. Now that may sound like some free energy nonsense, but check this out. I've made three little plating setups here using chunks of zinc instead of powder. It turns out the penny will only get plated if it's either touching zinc metal or if it's electrically connected to zinc via a wire. Submersing it in the zincate solution alone won't cut it. So yeah, it is the zinc driving the reaction, and yeah, this is extremely cursed. If you try to write out the full reaction for the battery that's being formed here, everything cancels out because the products and the reactants are the same. Somehow, we've made a zero volt battery that's capable of electroplating. Well, zero volts in theory. In practice, the setup actually produces a significant voltage. This implies that a loop of turning zinc back into itself produces a net release of energy, aka free energy. It's, it's energy from nothing. And to top it off, the starting material is this mess of powder, and it's being converted into what appears to be a highly ordered sheet of metal on the penny. It seems we're breaking the laws of thermodynamics like a checklist at this point. So apparently, this uh, silly educational demo also functions as an over-unity battery, which would actually be really convenient for the human race, you know, considering the whole energy crisis or whatever. But before giving me millions of dollars in the Nobel Prize, we should probably take a closer look at what's going on here. After a bunch of searching, I found a great paper on the topic that addresses way more points than I go through here. It turns out these silvery pennies are not plated in pure zinc. They're actually plated in a form of brass with high zinc content. So why is this important? The sheer act of mixing zinc and copper actually releases heat, and it also makes a more disordered product. So there is a free energy here. A negative gives free energy for the process, which means that thermodynamics is obeyed after all. But wait, don't you have to melt the metals for them to mix? Nope. The zinc actually migrates into the copper during the plating process. This brass has a high fraction of zinc, which is why it looks silvery but heating it in a flame allows the zinc to migrate deeper and mix more thoroughly with the copper. Pretty cool, right?